All right. Yeah, another tough crowd. This one is Patrice O'Neill, Sarah Silverman. She's on the last one. I don't think Patrice has been on one yet. I don't think he's on the first one. Can't remember Nick De Paolo, Nick De Paolo, De Paolo, Jim David. I don't know who that is. He's the only one I don't know. But yeah, let's go. It's an invasion, a liberation, an occupation. If you're French, you say "Nale la." That means don't go there. If you're Israeli, you say go there. If you're any other country, you say, I don't know, I want to help America. I don't know what to decide. If I could deal with these starving people in my country, I'd love to get on your side. <laughs> the people that are against it say Iraq has nothing to do with Al-Qaeda. But even if Saddam Hussein wasn't directly involved in 911, you know that son of a bitch laughed when he heard about it. <laughs> Now, as I said before, Saddam Hussein is the first guy to wear a yellow suit and a mustache since I think it was the Steve Harvey Showtime special in 93. <laughs> um, that's not the point. Who cares about that? Should we be going to Iraq, yes or no? Let's hear some answers. Yes. yes. We Why? Should, why we should be in Iraq, we should be in Iran, we should be in Saudi Arabia. Every country where you can make a million dollars being a bikini waxer. All right. Yeah. How about you, fella? I you said yes, we, too. Yes, absolutely, we should be in there, man. Okay. Revenge. Yes, payback. Do you payback, think that's it. Do you think 9-11, you think there's some Al-Qaeda connection there? Of course. I don't know. I mean, $100 billion on a war when all you need is $2 to put a bullet in Saddam Hussein's bean and spend the rest on the after party, baby. <laughs> sure, but look, have you noticed? They should kill him. They should kill him themselves. Don't you think the Republican Guard should just say, look, Saddam, there's nothing personal, but this is getting yeah, serious and blast them. You try no. to do well, it. Well, you have to force Like what did the gun? Well, who's going to have people kill their own people? You just Why can't not? do that, man. Like, it happens all the time. That's coming from him, a black yeah, guy. Well, that's exactly. what I'm saying. <laughs> you can't. Your project will have 10 but cases leaders, the Lord. No, leaders. I'm not talking about the... Well, they're killing each other, the Lord. The, you know what I mean. Yeah. The, the, That's but, what I was trying to make a joke at. I, I don't, not only knew you mean, I said it first, but go ahead. Well, you can't... You can't... I, you know, if I didn't like Al Sharpton, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have him killed because he's black. So they can't kill Saddam because they're, they're Saddam... Uh, them. Well, who, we, we, we know... <laughs> we knew that... The Saddam. We knew that when you let OJ off. Can I no, listen, yeah, that's why OJ wasn't guilty, ah, right? It's the same thing. Get him, thing. Jim. Who's yeah. sticking to him? Who, but who's going to have the balls if you're in a room with Saddam to make the first move? You know what yeah, I mean? That's true. Are you going to do that? And Push nobody backs you up? And I'm what sure are you people do? thought, like, shit, that they should have killed Thank Hitler. Thank you. They, yeah. got they tried right. to kill Hitler. I mean, they own people, but it's, just, it's hard for you to kill your own people. It's ridiculous. The whole we country hates keep, the guy. We should keep war where it belongs. Are Compton. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know, only, people, I don't understand this, man. I, you really, know what, though? But th they've been they've been framing the debate so that if you disagree with this, then you're un-American. You know, oh, like, that's yeah, not true. It's the truth. No, no but some I I criticized George Bush in my show, and somebody after the show said I was a commie liberal pinko faggot who deserved to die. Yeah, that was your and manager. I thought I don't deserve to die. <laughs> <laughs> don't you think when you look at don't you, when you listen to them? Don't you think? Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, shut up, job of a comic. <laughs> He looks like he'd be some... What are you, what are you, table for eight? Look at you. <laughs> Go up, all in. And this is a square. All right, let me ask you something serious. A lot of people say if we attack Iraq, we're going to increase terrorism. Do you think it's an increase or decrease? It? It's not going to either. I mean, terrorism's always going to be there. It's not like if we don't go in there, Al Qaeda's going to downsize. You know what I mean? Yeah. It'll How many terrorists of... do you think there is, man? What do you think well, there is? The country? Could be There's only a couple of dudes, man. It's a gang. They caught the dude that looked like Joey Buttafuoco, and they said the the whole that whole thing is finished. <laughs> and, and and Saddam's, I mean, the other dudes around the corner, the Bin Laden dude. The, yeah. but, so I mean, whatever, man. They, they, we got they, we got to destroy something. Right? Remember, <laughs> listen, listen, man. Yeah. Remember, okay, World War II. Wait a minute there, sweetness. <laughs> Say he's what all, you he's want. All itchy. Say what he's you all want. excited Don't to get out of his, his ad-lib written jokes. Now, look, here's what I'm saying. In World War II, right, we bombed, we bombed the Jap, we bombed the, the, the Asians. Right? The Japs. The, the Japanese. We didn't hit the other. Like, listen, will you listen to me? No. Here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. Let me finish. 
He, they bombed the Japanese, right? And you think you're Cornell West? Well, now listen to me. <laughs> Another nice nigga. Uh, that listen was a good one, wasn't it? <laughs> but he, but we, we've been, we've been gangsters for the last 50 years. After that, gangsters do... or gangsters? Who are you talking about right now? Well, I'm on a white show, so it's the ER. <laughs> so look, um, we oh, bombed them, and we've been um, gangsters for the last 50 years. Yeah. So we got to do something atrocious. To let people know. To, so we can be running stuff for the next 50 years. So we cannot let them get away with them. When I say them, whoever did it, right. after they flew the planes in the building, people were watching. Are you you got to you gotta you gotta smack them down, this, and then we can relax for the next 50 years. That's this, all I'm saying. That's this, is a good like, this is like getting a history lesson from Belushi in an animal house. <laughs> <laughs> we killed some Asians. It hurts. <laughs> the truth of the matter is, though, look. Nice to be on your show, by the way. Thanks. Right now. <laughs> Jesus Man, it was right, a very shut long up. Shut up. for a short Listen, turn. Listen, well, you, you cut me off. Go ahead. Who? I am? Not you, oh, sir. Yeah. <laughs> you know, guys, I really feel that, uh, what about Saddam Hussein? <clears throat> Let's talk, what happens if we don't go? What's going to happen? We bomb France. Well, should we bomb France or should they just mind their business? But well, he wants but, to bomb somebody. He wants to go in so bad. But it's can't not. Stand no, it. no, it's not Bush. It's just war loss. That's ridiculous. That's too simple. You know what I mean? But I'm saying, do you think... For example, we have to get a bunch of these countries on our side. Like, there's a lot of countries left over that we do have to get on our side. Do you think we should just go in and quit look, They got their own interests. Look, I mean, the well, I mean, look, at, look at the coalition they've got. They've got Britain, they've got Spain, they've got Bulgaria. That's not a coalition, that's a circle jerk. <laughs> you know, at the same time, you know, this isn't the first time that Europe has been passive while a... a, a uh -huh. Yeah. A Jew-hating tyrant with a weird-looking mustache, uh, you know, who, who, who kills his people by giving them gas. Obviously, I'm talking about Chef Boyardee. <laughs> Never again. I knew it. Never I again. Do my history you lesson. blaming it on my people. Now, listen. Hey, it's you. What, what happened to her? Yeah. Who do we have to get on our side? What countries? What Cameroon? Country? Who we Cameroon. Oh, geez. Guinea. Don't, yeah. don't piss them off. Yeah. <laughs> you can speak to Guinea for us, don't you think? Absolutely. I don't right. know what that anyway, meant to you. Why do we even need permission? I don't know. We don't, that's point? the whole thing. Is all country is so weak now. It was like, ha ha, the public's not into it. Yeah, the right. old days, they go, look, we're going, uh, Roosevelt would say, look, we, a war started two days ago. You might have heard those bombs. That was us. You people can help by minding your own business and shutting your traps. Right. <laughs> I, you know what? I don't know, though. I mean, the whole our way or the highway, it just... What's wrong with that? It just bothers me. I mean, Why it's like... We, because there's the whole world. Or, you know what I mean? There's yeah, the whole but world they, obviously consider. they have their own interests, just like we do. I, I mean, mean, the, the the UN, I mean, well, I mean, some people say the UN is like a battered wife. The bitch just don't listen. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I mean, are we going to have to pay attention to it, or what are we going to do? I mean, do we just... Are we totally alone? All right, let me tell you something. Who First said, of all... Who said that? Ike Turner? <laughs> What's that? Oh, the, uh, let me tell you one thing. I don't want this to turn into some anti-Arab versus America thing, okay? That's why we say evildoers, because we want to keep it vague. That's the politically correct way to say it. evildoers, just people that do evil. And, but I don't like people burning American flags over there. You want to start that with us? All right, listen. Next time I see American flag burn on TV, I got a picture of Casey Kasem. I'll burn it right here. Casey, yeah, he's Middle Eastern, that's right. And I, it's not nice to throw scurrilous remarks around, but this son of a bitch is in it up to his ears. And I have proof, documented proof in my office. I'm going to bring it down. Casey, listen. Oh, he's an Arab. Now listen, Casey. If you're listening, I'd like you to come down to 26 Federal Plaza. No one's going to do anything to you. We just want to re-register you. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to talk about a subject that we really don't know that much about, sex education. Ha, <laughs> ha, that was a good one, but is it good in school, sex education, is it good, bad, or a waste of time? Now, people have asked themselves the same thing about this show, but I don't want to talk about that right now. Be that as it may, let's talk about it. Is sexual education the responsibility of the parents? Should the schools interfere? No, you should learn it in the streets, like everything else. <laughs> in the alleyways and the gutters and the cars of life, baby. Well said by a black man. Now look. <laughs> the streets really have a bad rap. We suck. Yeah, no, no, okay. That's... <laughs> no, I was just adding to you. Point it to them. Yes. 
All right, let me ask you this. Can I ask you, what do you mean by interfere? If you mean teach them absence, that's one thing. But if it's like your physics teacher taking you to the Capri Motel at four in the afternoon, <laughs> and you're sitting on your face until Jeopardy comes on, that's, you know, <laughs> maybe they should mind their business. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, I think abstinence is good. You should, you should, they should cover all that stuff. But, like, you should definitely not preach abstinence. There's, there's, you know, that should be taught as an option. But if you really preach it, preach it, preach it, that's when the kids go crazy with sex. Have you ever heard of Catholic girls? <laughs> yes, I have. Yeah, you should teach. You should teach uh, contraception and disease prevention and where to get good lube. Again, okay. okay. now we're talking about Catholic boys. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I don't think I don't think parents really. I mean, like I said to my mommy, I said, "What does it mean when you know two you people do it?" Yeah. yeah, mommy. When I was that big, I said, "What does it mean when two people do it?" And she said, "It means the macaroni and cheese is almost ready." I mean, they, they don't know what to say, you know. I think that's a pretty good metaphor, actually. There you go. <laughs> um, what about this? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> In England, this is a good statistic, and you're an English expert. Yes. Over 100,000 kids under the age of 16 are in a program encouraging them to experiment with oral sex instead of intercourse. Should we try that here? The only thing, that, it's England you're talking about? Yeah. The only thing oral they should be encouraging is hygiene. <laughs> I mean, you, you ever see a chick's yeah. teeth from Liverpool? <laughs> Look, looks like a, the, you know, the rough at Augusta National. <laughs> <laughs> Again, trying to I mean, get a joke out with eight people. people. But that's, he knows his girlfriend's from Liverpool. I know, he knows your girlfriend's from Liverpool. Well, that's a direct <laughs> If they're going to teach oral sex, they ought to teach yeah. technique. What, look what you, you know, because every one of us technique? has had a, yes, we've all had a bad Hummer. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Amen. This girl. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Let me tell you, if parents, when you say learn it in the streets, I'll tell you a true story. Maybe this will spark something. When I was like 10, this is the greatest thing of all time. My friend's father used to, and he had only, he only went with the hottest girls. He would have them strip them naked and have me and my friends fool around with them, like make out with them and feel them up and everything, you know? I swear to God. And uh, I kept coming back like that night. My friends were like, hey, let's go watch what? I'm just saying nuts. You know, we get like, hey, you're crazy. So I started, kept coming back and bothering them all night. And the next day, my father had to come pick me up. And he goes, your son's really interested in sex. And then it was like dead silence for me and my father for like the whole walk home. Nothing. So, I mean, now do That's you think very was... moving. Thank I'm you. I'm crying inside. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Maybe you can get me one of those Lucille Lortel downtown theaters of yours. <laughs> do a quick one man show at Barrow Street, you son of a bitch. Now look. <laughs> but don't you think that that was actually healthy? Not the part where well, I was ashamed of it, but the part where we're actually doing it. Don't you think a guy like that is just... So you're saying your best friend's father was helping you get laid at like 12? That's Not healthy? Not laid at 10. He was letting us fool around this... I'm saying, I, I'm telling you story with the greatest man who ever lived. Yes, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> How did you guys learn about sex? Anybody have a little uh, anecdote? I was lucky. You were lucky? What happened? I, uh, well, I, was, I had three older sisters, so, you know, I was lucky because they were whores. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was taught that, I mean, you know, my mom said that it had something to do with the man planting the seed, so sex for me was always associated with yard work. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like I see a lawnmower and I, I go, just, oh my God. That's right. <laughs> How about you, fella? I just had regular sex, man. I mean, nothing special, no thumbs in the butt and, 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 and I didn't ask. If anybody has sex, oh, if anybody has Look, sex with you, they have to find your genitalia first. Ooh. Ooh, be, really? It'd be Ooh. easier to find the Lindbergh baby. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Where is she? It's like Where is she the contemporary? Yeah, great. <laughs> Linda, baby. I'm the only one who gets that. Go ahead. The only little... advice I got about sex from my dad, he said, you know, Nick, sex is like pizza. Even when it's bad, you still got to pay for it. <laughs> well put. I guess that's the end of the round. <laughs> the center square today, Mr. Jim David. Yes. And we'll be right back after this. <laughs> Thank you. There's been a lot of negative press about Armageddon. Nothing? But when this ancient prediction finally comes true sometime next week, it'll give us a rare opportunity to get right with God. You know, you might be meeting God sooner than you thought. So, since none of us really knows which God's going to be waiting for us, you better be prepared for all of them. First up is the notorious B-U-D, Buddha. <laughs> you say the name, you immediately think of a religion that seems cool, but then you find yourself sitting in the lotus position with a couple of dysfunctional vegans 
who are only doing this because their learning annex instructor said it's a good way to meet singles. <laughs> if you judge a religion on its teachings and not by the indentation its leader leaves in the sand, Buddhism may be for you. <laughs> Hinduism is all about the reincarnation. I recently found out that, that in one of my past lives, I was a Roman transvestite. They called me Ben-Hur. <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> Ben-Hur, they said. Hindus, Hindus, Hindus have too many gods to pray to. That's the problem with them. When you want to switch, it's like changing doctors. You go to your elephant god. He has to send the old charts over to your new guy. You know how long that takes? You call up the elephant, where's my charts? He's like, hey, I only got two hands. Because I know that's why I'm going Vishnu. He's got 11. <laughs> I guess that joke would work better. I'm not an expert. If there were more than two hands on the Vishnu right there. There's only four. I said 11. I was raised as a Catholic. And you can say what you want about us. People put all the blame on the priests. But when you're denied the godly pleasures of the flesh, and then a line of smooth... Smooth young boys is kneeling in front of you with their mouths open, all right? That can bring out the French house music all night long in any one of us. Now, suddenly, Father Brian Sash hearing around the altar like Giselle Bunchen on the Milan runway. Father Flaherty's on the pipe organ blasting out it's raining men. Nothing? All right. This brings us to the Jews. Everybody has an opinion on the Jews. They're like the blacks in the sense that when you choose to express that opinion, you shut the door first and lower your voice. <laughs> the chosen people are guided by the teachings of the Torah and the Hollywood Reporter. Use caution around them with food. They tend to become agitated by it. The Jews are successful. They evoke a lot of anger in people, and it's still a debate whether they bring it on themselves or it's just good old-fashioned player hating. The tragedy of Israel is that if this thing goes off, they will be hit in a devastating attack that will leave their businesses, buildings, and housings decimated. The good news, they're covered for most of us. Um, <laughs> Islam is the Oakland Raiders of religion. <laughs> there are many kinds of Muslims in the world, Sunnis, Shiites, and the Wahhabis. Now, not wannabes, I said Wahhabis, all right? How can I put this politely? The Wahhabis are the big newsmakers. On the positive side, the Islamics always take care of the poor. They're not materialistic as a rule, and they follow their religion closely. Hopefully not as close as the FBI follows it. But anyway, um, <laughs> let's face it, nobody wants to stereotype a whole religion. But when you leave my church, they say, go in peace. And when you leave the mosque, they say, everybody with a knapsack, stick around. I want to talk to you about something. <laughs> it's funny if you say knapsack instead of knapsack, by the way. If you're getting into comedy, we kid. But the truth is, if you want to jump on the Islamic bandwagon, just don't park it near a school. That's all I'm saying. Now, I know there are some... <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I know there's some fake intellectuals out there that say religion is the reason for all war. That's ridiculous. That's like blaming hip-hop for all the violence in music. Bad example. Religion is like <laughs> anything else. Religion is corruptible like anybody else. In fact, like me, I'm corruptible. So send me $20 to the show, and if I die first, I'll put in a good word with you, with whoever's in charge. <laughs> Thou shalt not change the channel, or I shall smite thee. Hey, you guys should have seen us off panel. <laughs> we were really funny. Look, it's not easy to talk to kids about sex, but can we really teach them today? Cable TV, the internet, by the time they're 12, they've already seen things that Larry Flint wouldn't allow in his garage. So here's your task. Take your experience and give the kid a sex talk. How about Patrice first? Well, my, thank you, sir. My sex talk would be with my little girl, sweetie. You know, I know it's not fair. If some little boy plays the piano at six, He's Beethoven. If some 10-year-old retarded boy learns how to count matchsticks that fell on the ground, he's Rain Man. But when a 15-year-old girl likes to have sex, they call her a slut. And that's not what she should be called. Call what she really should be called, a prodigy. Keep, <laughs> <laughs> keep striving, sweetie. <laughs> OK. That was very inspirational, S Sarah. <laughs> Sometimes a bird meets a bee, and the bird will put his penis inside the bee's vagina. At first, the bee is scared and uncomfortable, and the whole experience borders on devastation, but then eventually, despite that first encounter, or maybe because of it, the bee cannot get enough bird <laughs> Good night, sweetie. Oh. Bird <laughs> Nick DiPaolo. Speaking of bird Nick, Nick DiPaolo. DiPaolo. <laughs> hey. Uh, we found the pulse of the audience. Uh, Lisa. 
<laughs> Lisa, my little girl, I'd like to talk to you about the birds and the bees. You see, the birds and the bees are different today than when I was your age. When I was a kid, birds used to stay in one nest, but today they jump from nest to nest, and that's how you get the West Nile virus, and that stuff will kill you. <laughs> and well, as far as the bees go, uh, there used to be only one kind of bee, but now there's something they call African bees. And if you bring one of them home, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> Do we understand each other, sweetie? Sleep tight. Uh, Jim, David. Uh, Jim, would you like to finish us off? Yeah. And I don't mean that as a euphemism. Yeah, there you go. All right. I would say to my kid about the birds and the bees, or as my daddy called it, the sheep and the sharecroppers, <laughs> eventually you'll learn for yourself that sex with commitment is the best, but sex without commitment is usually worth the cab fare. <laughs> but I really don't know what to say to a kid about sex, except this is our little secret. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to follow that. Folks, guess what? That's the show. I'm smarter to follow that. Thank you very much for coming. And uh, stay tuned for, uh, I don't know what's on next. This doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, episode three. That was quite, again, some fucking, they always have a, yeah, very, uh, they have great topics on the show. That's probably one of the best things about it. Is the, well, it is obviously it's, the, it's balls, but yeah. But I'm fucking lean and tired, so yeah, that's the reaction. Sweet.